Hi, Datables. Welcome to another episode of the Datable Podcast, a show all about the sociology of dating, because we've been observing dating behaviors for years now, and we want to dig into the whys of people's behavior so we can get to the hows <laughs> of bettering people's behavior, including yourself. Absolutely. I feel like it's always yourself. It always comes down to yourself. But I'm excited today because we're going a little past early dating. We're going all the way to marriage. But what's really interesting about this episode is that it's super relatable to all stages of relationships. We definitely dig into it. it the book, the authors that we talked to wrote a book called The 8080 Marriage. And what was interesting about it is I think in when you're dating, if you are, your goal is marriage or committed partnership. Sometimes it can feel like a long ways off, but I think it's really good to hear this stuff from people that have been through it. One of the guests, Kaylee, she mentioned, it was kind of like when you're about to give birth, there's the book, what to expect when you're expecting, and you read it before you give birth. Mm -hmm. And I think this kind of, it is a really good analogy for dating, because, you know, if you're looking to get into a long-term committed relationship, why not start now? I think people really just don't know what the fuck to expect after they get married. They think all of their problems will be resolved and all is good because society recognizes you as an entity together. But how you operate in a in a relationship is so dependent on you. Mm -hmm. And this conversation dispels the myth that all relationships should be 50-50, equal partnership, everybody contributes equally. And they're saying, no, that is not how it works from their own personal experience and from a very traumatizing experience of almost getting to that point of, mm -hmm. of divorce. So I just think that this is a conversation anybody should be hearing, even if you're not in a relationship, because it preps you for what's to come if, if a long-term relationship is what you're looking for. Right. I was actually looking at some stats that was interesting. So from 2009 to 2019, I think, mm -hmm. you know, it typically takes a few years to get the stats. Divorces have been on the decline, but mm. also marriages have been on the decline. So it kind of evens out a bit. But I think people are just more conscious in general. And, yeah. you know, like as we're talking to Kaylee and Nate, they were saying they wish they had this material when they first got married. Mm -hmm. And I think because of podcasts or because of just different, you know, more material and people coming forward with their stories, I think it's been able to, pay, at least I wanna believe, it's been able to pave the way for more conscious relationships that hopefully won't end in divorce because we're kind of like mentally prepping ourselves a bit. I know you never know until you're in it, but at least like, at least knowing that things could come down the pipeline, I think is a, an important first step. I don't know about you, but even when we started this podcast, I thought I was well prepared for a marriage, thinking, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> I'm going to crush relationships. And as we go on with our seasons, the more I feel like I don't know. And not that we'll ever get to a place where we know everything, right. but it's good. It's nice to be in a perspective of there's more I can learn versus, oh, I know everything about relationships now. Oh. For sure. I think like I just assumed you met someone, you got married. Yeah. That was it. Lived was it. happily ever after. <laughs> but I think like we it actually kind of reminds me of an episode we had last season with Alice that talked mm. about how her and her now ex husband were co parenting in yes. the same duplex. And she mentioned because they just met right in college and they had you know, she said like we didn't have any relationship education at all. We just yeah. kind of did it. And, you know, she said if they had some of the tools, maybe things would have ended a different way. But by the time they got there, it was almost too late. It's this is what the thought that is astounding to me is I read this in a book the other day that said love is really based on ignorance so that first initial falling in love period is because you're falling in love with what you think your mm -hmm. partner is. And once you're in a relationship and you are doing all the domestic things together, the 
you are revealed someone else and your ignorance goes away. So the love doesn't mean that it goes away. It just shifts to a different kind of love. And I think that's what Hollywood does not cover. Mm -mm. That's what these love songs do not cover is once the ignorance leaves, what happens when you get to know your partner more and more? Yeah, and I think we definitely touch on the domestic side of relationships that I think, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think can be a little intimidating. I'll admit I've never lived with someone. It's definitely intimidating. I think back to even roommates I've had. And, you know, mm. there were domestic things that became tension points. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're dating, you think, oh, I just need to find someone that checks all these boxes yeah. and, you know, makes me feel good and does all the things. And then you add like the extra layer of domestic side in. It's a lot to kind of feel overwhelmed by, but I think mm -hmm. this episode and other, you know, resources out there, I like it because it's mentally pre preparing me. I started having conversations with my partner about it, about just like all the things I learned in this episode. I think having those conversations are really important, even as you're like in an early stage of a relationship, if you're trying to get there. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that the romance has to die. So we do uncover <laughs> that in the conversation. But it does mean the reality TV effect does subside. What I mean by that is we've talked about this on this show. This is why people on The Bachelor fall in love so fast, because their only goal is to fall in love. Their only goal is to watch their relationship progress. And then they're once they pick their partner, they're thrown back into reality and they have to mm -hmm. do live together. And that's why so many of them break up because they realize, oh, there's other shit that we <laughs> need to do other than be on a beach and sip cocktails and tell each other that we're falling in love with each other. So the reality TV effect does subside and the reality hits, the actual reality hits. And this is where we pick up the conversation. Fantasy over. <laughs> 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 but you can doesn't mean the fantasy has to be boring, right? That's true. That's true. It's just different. It's, it's real. Different. It's real. <laughs> You're just not as dumb about things. <laughs> well, it's interesting when I was looking at the stats, I think you think of the reasons for divorce are going to be, you know, money or infidelity or, you mm. know, substance yep. abuse or some of the big stuff. But one of the most common was just conflict. And I think these little things start to, you know, Come, they start to build a lot of resentment. And I think once you build resentment, that can be the biggest danger in a relationship for sure. Yes. Uh, I just met up with a couple recently. They're about to get married and they're they just bought their new house together and they just moved in for the first time together. And my friend said to me, the, the most surprising thing I found about my partner is that he doesn't like Pottery Barn. <laughs> and I know it sounds so... I don't know, so <gasps> minimal. And you know, if you are stepping back, but she said we had many fights over our taste in furniture yeah. that we never thought about before. And here we are a month from getting married and we're fighting about what kind of our fur what kind of furniture we should get and which store we should get it from. I mean, I'm not going to like shit on them because I'm very particular in my furniture. So I totally yes. feel that. Yes. But then on the other side, if you take a step back, it's like, it took so much effort to find this person. Are we really going to fight about Pottery Barn? You know, like that's the part that's, and I, I'm not saying I'm above it. I probably in the moment would be like, what the fuck? I want this couch. Like, why don't you want this also? But yeah. it seems so trivial and ridiculous when you're removed from it. And that's where we pick up the conversation too in this interview is what if you're the partner that's driving the relationship more? Mm -hmm. How do you get your partner to step up or to contribute or to kind of assert themselves even more? So it's all the dynamics of a relationship we uncover in this <laughs> one hour interview, oh, which is insane. That we're this is such that. a good one. I'm so glad we had them on the show. It was such a good one. And I think, you know, it's some, it, one of the questions that we talk about is how do you like discern from someone not stepping up and doing the work of like mm -hmm. being interested and in being a healthy relationship versus, you know, just the dynamics that play out in relationships. And I think even from early stages of dating, Eating, this stuff comes into play. Like we're always mm -hmm. hearing people say, I'm doing all the work or I'm planning everything. Like what's the line, you know, of this isn't a good situation versus, it, you know, people bring different things to the table kind of thing. And you've been there, right, Julie? 
You've been there. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Of like that I've been the one planning everything. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think some of it is I took it on myself. But then I don't know. In retrospect, looking back on it, too, I'm like, was I trying to force something that wasn't like there, you know? I think about this all the time because with my previous relationship, we got into many fights that I felt like he should have planned more. Every trip we go yeah. on, it was my itinerary and I would resent him while we're on the trip, not enjoying <laughs> our vacation because I kept thinking, this is what I want to do. How about you just pick lunch for once? But in hindsight, I kind of think about one, I never communicated this yep, until after yep. the fact, which ruined our vacation already. It was a little late. And the second thing I was thinking about was he had other interests that I just never cared about. And I wish I would have taken more time and asked him on this trip, what are the things that mm. you would be interested in seeing? And yeah. then if he said X, Y, and Z, then it gives me the, uh, it allows me to say, how about you plan those things, right. right? Well, I think it's hard because it's you're merging two people that have very yes. different ways of living. And, you know, it's one of those things that you, when you think about it, let's say you do meet in your 30s or 40s, this person has had 30 years plus of life experience before you. They've had this whole life yep. that you are not part of. And it's actually kind of like, kind of meta when you think about it. Because you're like, you were a functioning person before me. I don't need to do all this stuff. Yep. But I think when I've stepped into the planner role, I think there's a few things. Like one, I have trouble relinquishing control. So that's something mm -hmm. I've learned about myself. Mm -hmm. But then the other side is I took it very personally like this person doesn't yeah. want to, you know, make a reservation because I'm not important enough to them. And I've learned over the years that it doesn't always mean that. Like that's like reading a lot into it. Like people show love in different ways. And just because that's something that I do doesn't mean that that's how someone, one, needs to be loved also and that also what they're going to reciprocate. But then, you know, that's the line, though, is we hear all these people all the time that are in these relationships or situationships where they're doing all the work. And that's that's not a good role to be in either. I just always think about this image of a couple and let's say one person is doing all the trip planning and resenting their partner and their partner is like scrubbing the kitchen, resenting their partner yeah. for not helping clean when both people feel like they're right, <laughs> you know, thinking what they're doing is so important. Why isn't my partner contributing? That is what a, a true relationship is. Well, it's it all comes down to communication. I mean, we say it's so cliche and we say it all the time. But I think when we start to bottle this stuff up, like even if, you know, you're in an early stage relationship and it feels like you're the one texting all the time, maybe it's that they're not that into it, but maybe it's just that you're doing it all so they don't feel like you want them to do it or they need to do it. There's so many reasons. And I think we're so afraid to have those conversations because we're afraid we're going to get the answer we don't want a lot of times. Mm. But I think there's only upside because, I mean, you know, worst case scenario is someone says, I'm not that into you. But wouldn't you rather know now than, you know, yeah. months and months down the road? And best case is they they are aware of what you've been like harnessing in. I think I've definitely learned that. I used to harness so much. That is Me the too. worst, the worst. It's a very lonely place because you're only talking to yourself. And it's so unfair to your partner too. Like yeah. it's super unfair to them when you think about it. Cool. Okay. Well, let's go into some announcements. We don't want to you know, we don't want to keep this going too long because we have such a good episode in store. Uh, quick announcements. You know, we have the Facebook group, Love in the Time of Corona. We are still calling it that because we are still indeed in the time of Corona. Yes, we are. <laughs> so one day we will change the name, but not yet. So Love in the Time of Corona by the Dateable Podcast. That's the Facebook group at Dateable Podcast on Instagram. You can always check us out on YouTube if you're curious about our, you know, recording 
arrangements <laughs> and you just want to see our faces, you can always go to YouTube. We'll occasionally be doing YouTube lives too, where we answer dating questions. So you can replay. There's one we did a couple weeks ago that you can re-listen to on there. So definitely mm-hmm. check out YouTube if you haven't already. 